Every time I've done linear algebra and I've put vectors up on the plane or I've done a transformation of the plane to the plane, I've always put out this grid system. So in this case, I've got the standard basis vectors and it's created this standard grid system. Now, let me go and look at one particular grid line here. And if I take any point on this grid line, maybe I'll just put some vector that goes out to the grid line. If I take any point in this grid line, well, it's always got an x coordinate of two. It's always these two steps to the right. But how much up it goes depends on which particular vector I'm talking about. Uh, this green one, it looks like it's gone up sort of one and maybe two thirds of a step. So how do I describe all the points on this grid line? Well, I'm gonna say this line is equal to a particular set of vectors. And in particular, it's a set of vectors which is always a two along the E1, and then some arbitrary amount T along the E2. Now, what's crucial about this to be a grid line is that the two here is an integer. As in, when I look at all of the vertical grid lines, there's the one right at the origin, but then there's the one which is one step to the right, and then there's the grid line which is two steps to the right, and this grid line that's three steps to the right. I'm always taking these integer values. So these grid systems are all about taking these integer values stepping to the right, or if I look vertically, these integer values stepping up. That's going to give me all of my red horizontal lines. And then additionally, all the intersection points, all of those are going to represent integer linear combinations where I've gone, say, two steps to the right and one step up, or two steps along the one standard basis vector and one step along the second standard basis vector. But in particular, they're integer values of that, opposed to taking pi steps or root two steps or a third of a step or anything like this. Grid systems are all the integer linear combinations of the standard basis vectors. So, okay, let me do a completely different basis. So now I've got a different B1 and a different B2. They're a basis, they are linearly independent and they span all of R2, but in particular, they're gonna define a coordinate system and the coordinate system is gonna define a grid system, which are all the way I can take lines where I've shifted things by these integer multiples of the standard basis vectors and it looks like this. Now, if I look at a particular grid line in this new coordinate system, then what do I get? Well, let's put a vector on it and notice what's happened. Anything on this particular line is one step down along the B2, but it's some arbitrary amount that we don't know along the B1. So it's always got a minus one in the B2, which is an integer value, minus one is an integer value, and then some arbitrary amount in the B2, and so we get a line that looks a little bit like this. TB1, that's arbitrary, and then minus B2, which stands for minus one times the B2. I can even go and put both of them on top of each other. So this is the coordinate system that I get from this new funky basis, and then I can overlay that with the coordinate system from the standard basis. And any vector that you might put, no matter where you want on the plane, I could represent it in either coordinate system. And then any vector that I chose to write, I could represent it in either coordinate system. I could tell you what collinear combination do I need to do in the standard basis, or I could ask what linear combination do I need to do in this new funky basis. I kind of think it's kind of pretty looking how these grid lines overlap. Now, you might be thinking that this is all a little bit silly, R2 is relatively simple, why don't you just always use the standard basis vectors? Why even bother with some other basis vectors? But now suppose my subspace is this one. It's a plane living in R3. I've got two different basis vectors that are living on that plane. Well, the standard basis vectors, they're not even on this subspace. So I can't describe this subspace as some linear combination of the standard basis vectors any longer because it just it doesn't fit there anywhere. It's a sort of a weird cut through all of R3. So if I have these two different basis vectors, I want to figure out how can I create a coordinate system out of them? How can I create grid lines? But it's the same thing. I can just go and take all of the integer linear combination of these and those are gonna give me all of my intersection points and it looks a little something like this, where now I've got another grid system on there. I've got all of these lines. The lines are separated by integer multiples of these two different basis vectors. So you can do this no matter what your subspace is. Uh, if you have any subspace, you can go and try to find a basis for it. And if you have a basis for it, it's gonna generate its own coordinate system where you can write different vectors in your subspace as linear combinations of the basis vectors and then you can go and write down an entire grid system for those two different basis vectors and get some sort of representation like this. 
So while the standard basis is really great if you're in R2 or R3, if you're in some sort of subspace, you can still have coordinate systems, you can still have grid lines, you just get to use any other basis.